There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. That is a quote by Peter Drucker. And welcome to episode 32 of the Design to Win podcast. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about credit card and why young people should avoid credit card debt. And I'm going to share some personal experience and... Uh, this is part of uh, the chapter on, uh, what is this, Millionaire Money Maps, Being Money Smart, in my book, Designed to Win Roadmap. So stay tuned. This is Designed to Win Podcast. I'm your host, C. Ruth Taylor, and this is a program where we share entrepreneur secrets and keys to help you to win in your life and career. I am a Jamaican independent author, entrepreneur, publisher, <laughs> career coach, and today I want to really encourage some young persons as it relates to money management in terms of credit card credit card debts, share some personal experience and just some advice with the hope that I will be able to help a young person, a young adult to get it right early before you get to my age. But even if you're close to my age, it's not too late. So credit card mismanagement has been one of my regrets. And I'm educating many persons as possible about the need to be careful with credit card. And uh, that which is my pain <laughs> has now become part of my purpose to help people to find financial freedom and financial peace, especially when it comes to credit card debt. Now, credit card debt is one of the leading causes of bankruptcy I um, I've discovered in the US. And so my goal here is to briefly expose some of the hidden dangers of a credit card and uh, what can happen when you mismanage your credit card. Now, years ago when I was about 23, I took out my first credit card. It was a key card and it was easy to manage. I didn't have much responsibilities then. And then I wanted to get a bigger credit card, a master card. And a very good friend of mine said, do not do it. So for the first uh, uh, maybe five years of having this card, it was not a problem. I could put my salary on it and use the card. I was not technically treating it like a debt because who keeps borrowing the same amount of money over and over. You pay it back, you borrow it. You pay it back, you borrow it. And that's what happened when each month you put your paycheck on your credit card and you spend it and you go back. You're actually postponing managing the debt. And that's what I did for five years and I thought it was okay. And then the next five years, I was involved with a company that we had to send money overseas very often and I used my credit card. So each month the credit card was taken care of. The loan wasn't fixed because each time you put the money on it, you 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 you, you take it back. So you're not actually dealing with the, the debt. And that's what happened to me. And I remember one day God began challenging me to stop borrowing and I did not listen. So it so happened that I left that job and I was not sure where I was going to get money from for for a good while. I didn't have another job. And so for two months, I could make no payment. And because it was a U.S. credit card, I ended up with late fee and I ended up with a hefty fine of a thousand U.S. dollars. Now, at that time, I think the credit card was 2,300 U.S. dollars. And because for a long time I had been doing so well, the bank kept increasing my credit limit until it got to 3,300 dollars. And I entered a season where I just could not manage a credit card and I just was stuck in minimum payments. And then there were other times when I couldn't pay on the card. So I was stuck with late fee, over limit fee, all kind of fees where I remember over a 
three months payment in an effort for this not to go into complete bad debt, I had to come up with more than a thousand US dollars again to pay. And when I paid that sum of money, my debt did not move. So 3,300 US dollars and having paid the bank almost 3,000 US dollars in fines, my credit card um, debt was barely reduced by 150 US dollars. So now it became 3,148 dollars. Can you imagine that? And the thing really grieved me. It really, really grieved me because I was paying what Dave Ramsey called stupid tax. And uh, so I want to... A lot of times when we're taking out the credit card as young people, we are not thinking long term and we're not treating the credit card like it's an actual debt. And so what the bank knows is that 70% of people, MasterCard and others know this based on their studies that they will never fully repay the credit card and they're going to stuck in minimum payments. And what you, you're doing when you get stuck in minimum payment is that you're paying, you're giving the bank money. And you're never actually addressing the actual debt. That was a mistake that I made. And that's a mistake that I don't want it to be made. So if you're going to do that, do not, if you have a credit card, do not get stuck in paying minimum payments. Two, treat the credit card like it's an actual loan. It is a loan, a loan that you need to repay and leave it alone because when those charges just keep going up and up and up, trust me, it can lead you into depression and there are persons who have committed suicide because of their credit card debts. And you have to make a decision that you need to stop borrowing. You can't be borrowing to pay debt and you keep borrowing for stuff. You have to to do that. And so I have seen this as part of the price I paid for one, my disobedience and my stupidity. I remember at one stage when the bank increased my limit and I was publishing a book and I needed some funds, a friend of mine said, well, you could see this credit card increase, limit increase as the answer to your prayers. And with that, I borrowed the thousand dollars, invested in my book publishing endeavors. And today I am still feeling it because my credit card is still not fixed. So it's easy to get in, but it's very, very hard to get out of. And I'm saying young people, they're going to come to you with these credit cards and they're not going to tell you some of the, the things. So I discovered 15 quote unquote hidden fees it's not hidden if you read the documents but very often they're not going to tell you all of these charges so i'm just going to use mastercard as an example now this was based on 2018 fees all right look at this number one there's a primary joining or annual fee that's US $90. So whether you use the card or not, at a certain point, every year you're going to have to pay $90 for the card, right? Then there is a supplementary annual fee of $60. US If you lose the card and have to replace it, that's another $60. US If you withdraw money, that is a cash advance, that's 10% plus GCT, there is an annual interest rate of 15% secured, annual interest rate unsecured of 18 to 21%. Some of these things I don't even understand. Over limit fee of $69. So if you go over the limit by even a dollar, you're going to get hit with that. And then there is the return check of $65. There's a replacement statement of another $20. There is, if you need a credit report, that's $55 US dollars. If there's a credit bureau fee, that is almost like, almost maybe 20 US for that or 15 US. It is about a little over 2,000 Jamaican dollars. Then there's a voucher search, item retrieval per item, um, cardholders request fee of US $25 and then there's a monthly minimum payment of 4% of your statement balance. And if you're late in your fees and there are penalties, it is 4% 
of the original debt plus the, the added amount. And so I, I'm, I'm warning you, stay away from credit cards. Your credit card is not your emergency fund. Now, one young person told me that the, it's better you save a thousand US, put that down, so that if there's a real emergency, you have your own money to use rather than not saving and using a credit card as your emergency. I think that is really stupid. Um, some person might be offended, but you don't need to go into debt for emergency if you plan for the emergency, unless it's a major illness that the money that you've set aside is not enough, then... Because most times you're, you're going into debt. They, as a young person, they, they pay their loan. The financial places are not going to give you more than 100000 unsecured. So what if from day one you started working, you decide to put aside, um, save 100000 and set that aside for emergency? Then you would not have to get into credit card debt because I tell you, it's easy to get in, but it's hard to get out. And so in the book, I also share some story to illustrate the point. And so stay tuned for Sam's story. This is the Design to Win podcast, a program where we share entrepreneur secrets and keys to help you to win in your life and career. And today we're talking about credit cards. So if you've been listening, you would have heard my personal story and why you should avoid credit cards or be care, be extremely careful because it's easy to get. But when you end up in a cycle of minimum payments and not being able to make payments for whatever reason, you are going to be in deep trouble and it can take you years to get out. So let me tell you Sam's story. Let's use this as an example. So Sam has a US dollar MasterCard with a limit of a thousand US dollars. Let's say he has had his card for 10 years and only paid the annual user fee. This means Sam either paid the card in full whenever he used it or he never used it. If the user fee remains at $60 for 10 years, then Sam has given the credit card company $600 US to retain or use the card. It is likely that those costs would have increased in those years as well. So at least $600 US, right? What if Sam gave up the credit card in year three and had an emergency fund of a thousand US dollars? Sam would have saved at least 420 US dollars, which he could invest elsewhere. Now, is it really worth it, Sam? No wonder Stephen Covey says, effective people have the habit of starting with the end in mind. I say think long term to win. So let's look at minimum payments and other fees. Imagine Sam had a medical emergency and maxed out his credit card for some reason. He resorted to paying only minimum payments for 10 years. He would automatically have been giving the credit card company more money. So that's 4% of 1000 which would be $40, right? $40 over 10 years would be $400. US So in addition to the user fee and the minimum payments, Sam would have paid at least $1,000 US to the credit card company in those years. No, remember, I know things would add up. That's over 10 years. So he has paid them a thousand US dollars at least, and his credit card limit is a thousand dollars. But guess what? Having paid that thousand dollars, his debt original loan of a thousand dollars doesn't move. So Sam still owes them a thousand dollars. The situation is even more frightening. If Sam missed payments, paid the minimum payment late in those years and made cash advances or withdrawals, his balance would have increased and he would have had to give more money to the bank than he originally borrowed. By now you get the point. So if you're Sam, is it really worth it? I know how this feels. I have been Sam and there are many Sams out there and I hope you are seeing the insanity of it all. If you do not need to have a credit card, 
Bear in mind the responsibilities and do not become a victim of stupid taxation through credit card mismanagement. I want to leave you with some questions on this podcast, which is a little longer than our usual podcast because it's a very serious thing. Do you still want a credit card? If so, are you only making minimum payments? Have you been paying your credit card on time? Do you have a credit card regrets? Is it worth keeping a credit card? Can you really manage this responsibility? And is there a better way to do your business without a credit card? On a very somber note, this is Ruth Taylor reminding you that life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by design. Carefully designed to win today. And in your design, avoid the credit card debt or credit card mismanagement at all all cast. Tough now until next time.